Hey everyone and welcome back. On this week's video, I'll be breaking down why I don't care about your core strength. So a lot of people will come in thinking that core strength is very important. It's the thing that protects your lumbar spine, your lower back. Uh, it allows you to have good posture, all of these things, uh, be more athletic, whatever. And I challenge you to re-examine what you define as core strength and why you think it's so important. So for most people, when we're talking about core strength, they'll be thinking uh, rectus abdominis. That's the first thing people think about, your six-pack muscle. How good are you at flexing, right? Uh, and that's fine, but you have to think that when most people perform these crunches, they're very explosive, they are merely uh, flexing the torso, but they're not really adding anything to structural integrity. Uh, and for the most people, they're using momentum, they're using quads, calves, toes, everything but their abs to get the job done. So that's uh, your standard fare rectus abdominis. For other people, we'll think about anti-rotation, uh, getting you to create more stiffness, squeeze your glutes, basically become very stable. So you're forcing localized tension to disguise itself as stability because they are not the same thing. Uh, it is not integrated. All you're doing is you're preventing bones from moving around. Okay, that's what you get with uh, anti-rotation. Also, pal-off presses or pay-off presses, however you say that. So these are some examples of, of this kind of thinking. As far as rotational exercises, we can talk about the uh, cable chop and lift uh, uh, from FMS fame. And really all you're doing there is in any exercise that you're going to be in the gym, a coach or a trainer is going to cue you into a athletic posture. So shoulders back, chest out, uh, spine is straight or neutral. But as you all know from previous videos, this is the textbook definition of extension. So now we are relying on this extension pattern, which is already doing us no good. If you want to know why, you can check out that video. We are merely adding tension. We are ingraining or further ingraining this behavior of extension in order to manage uh, forward flexion, anti-rotation, and rotation. So we are in a compromised position with respect to the position of the obliques because now the ribcage is flared. Those obliques are on eccentric load. Um, and we are inefficient at being able to transfer forces from the ground to the upper body. So that's a big problem. So what do we do instead? Like if, if core strength as it's traditionally taught isn't really doing much for us except maybe buying us into a further locked extension pattern, then what do you do? You learn how to exhale. There are breathing mechanics and breathing skills and intra-abdominal pressure generation that you need to understand, you need to embody before you start stacking skills on top of this foundation. If you never learn how to exhale fully, if you never learn how to feel all of the air leaving your body, if you never learn how to reposition or reorient the lower ribs with respect to the top of the pelvis, then you have no business doing strength training exercises. Like they'll work for a while until they don't. And then you wonder what happened, what's going on? I train my core every day. Have you ever known anyone who's trained their core a lot? They do a ton of core exercises and then they still have lower back pain or worse yet, they've given themselves a hernia. I know a lot of people like that. They got a really strong core. Yeah, then why did you get injured, right? What's going on there? Uh, the same thing can be said for hamstring stretching. People ham stretch their hamstrings all the time and then they, they pull one of their hamstring muscles, right? Or they tear an attachment site. That's a horrible thing to, to happen to someone, especially if they're taking care of their hamstrings or taking care of their core strength. So you have to learn how to leverage the internal obliques. Those are the muscles that attach on the lower ribs all the way to the, to the top of the, the pubic bone. And their main job is to get the lower ribs to internally rotate and close down. They also posteriorly rotate the pelvis. So now you have things that are in this forward position, right? That's forward. And as you exhale, you're getting these two stacks of bones to uh, face one another. So now the obliques are in a much better position in order to transmit forces and to do their job. Another fun fact, with that exhale, your rib cage is now retracting. So now more of your weight's gonna be on the heels as opposed to your toes. But nobody really talks about this. Nobody really coaches this stuff uh, with very few exceptions. So now you're looking at basic motor skills which are prerequisites for any kind of core strengthening or ab strengthening that you'd wanna do in the future. Seems like 
a worthy investment of your time to learn how to, how to make these skills work for you. Another added benefit is if you learn to exhale appropriately well, uh, you'll actually be able to shut off a lot of those pesky, uh, stubborn behaviors like uh, a nagging low back, a tight low back, tight hips, uh, cranky shoulder. You're able to reposition your ribcage with respect to all the other joints which kind of interface with it. Uh, now you don't have to worry about other muscles which are on eccentric load because a piece of this relationship of bones is now in a different orientation than before. Imagine that, like your rib cage is starting to float forward and now like the, the shoulder blade is still hanging on back there. So now the muscles that attach these two, these two sets of bones is on eccentric load. The same thing with the clavicle and the, the rib cage, the same thing with the humerus and the scapula. All of these things are going on, but now one thing is moving more with respect to everything else. You don't think that's gonna cause a problem down the road? And the best way that you have to uh, stabilize these situations is by adding localized tension. So let me use lats to stabilize my shoulder. Let me use core strength to stabilize my spine. That's not how it works. That is not how it works by any stretch of the imagination. So that's why today I am here telling you that core strength is not that big of a deal. It's not something that you should uh, focus a lot of time and energy on because you're probably skipping some more important skills uh, at the foundational level. Okay? So this has been why I do not believe in core strength. I don't target core strength with any of my clients. And this is how I'm able to get them out of a lot of nagging lower back issues because now we're respecting the position of the bones with, the, with respect to one another. And this is why I don't like uh, the word core strength. I don't like the focus that it instills in us to try to make uh, us better at contracting local tissue. We have to learn to integrate the entire thing as a whole. We have to learn how to use our body in a much more uh, fused manner, right? Because if we're just adding tension here and tension here and tension here and tension here, uh, we're not looking at the whole picture. And then we wonder why we have lower back issues or sports hernias, right? Because now we're trying to generate forces in a compromised position because a rib cage is now forward. So on next week's video, I'll be talking about why forward head posture is actually not a terrible thing. So stay tuned.